listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 265. We're continuing in the book of Isaiah. There is hope in chapter 52 that Israel will be saved. But when we get to verse 13, we start to look at more prophecy very specific to Jesus Christ. And once again, the word in the name Jesus is not mentioned in Isaiah. Remember, Jesus wouldn't be born for another seven to eight hundred years after this is written. But what is described, all the details, especially in chapter 53, are incredible that Jesus of Nazareth fulfills every bullet point, every description, and the likelihood of that just randomly happening 800 years after it was said to happen is astronomical. Even to fulfill just a few of those things would be almost impossible. But we're looking at an entire chapter describing quite vividly and precisely what would happen around the time of Jesus' death. And in chapter 54, there is more hope where God describes bringing his people home after being disciplined There is hope that being one of God's means ultimate protection against your enemies. Jumping over to the New Testament, we are beginning the book of Ephesians, written by Paul, and I'll be giving a much more detailed introduction later in this episode. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Isaiah 51, verses 17 to 23. God punished Israel. Wake up! Wake up! Jerusalem, get up! The Lord punished you forcing you to drink a cup full of his anger. And you drank every drop of it until you fell down drunk. Jerusalem had many people, but none of them became leaders for her. None of the children she raised became guides to lead her. Troubles came to you, Jerusalem, in pairs. Your land was destroyed and lies in ruins. And your people suffered from famine and war. But no one felt sorry for you or showed you mercy. Your people became weak. They fell on the ground and lay there. They were lying on every street corner like animals caught in a net. They were punished by the Lord's anger until they could not accept any more punishment. When God said he would give them more punishment, they became very weak. Listen to me, poor Jerusalem. You are weak like a drunk, but you are not drunk from wine. Your God is the one who fights for his people. This is what the Lord your God says to you. Look, I am taking this cup of poison away from you. It is full of my anger, and I am taking it out of your hand. You will not be punished by my anger again. I will now use my anger to punish the people who hurt you. They tried to kill you. They told you. Bow down before us, and we will walk all over you. Your back became like the ground under their feet. You were like a dirt road for them to walk on. Isaiah 52. Israel will be saved. Wake up! Wake up! Zion, clothe yourself with strength. Holy city of Jerusalem, Stand up and put on your beautiful clothes. Those filthy foreigners will not enter you again. Jerusalem, get up and shake off the dust. City of Zion, you were a prisoner, but take the chains off your neck. This is what the Lord says. You were not sold for money, so I will not use money to set you free. This is what the Lord God says. First, my people went down to Egypt and became slaves. Then Assyria made them slaves. Now look what has happened. 
says the Lord. Another nation has taken my people. That country did not pay to take my people, but they rule over them and laugh at them. And they say bad things about me all the time. The Lord is the one saying these things. This happens so that my people will learn about me. My people will know who I am. My people will know my name. And they will know that I am He is speaking to them. How wonderful it is to see someone coming over the hills to tell good news. How wonderful to hear him announce. There is peace. We have been saved. And to hear him say to Zion, Your God is the king. The city guards are shouting. They are all rejoicing together. They can all see the Lord returning to Zion. Ruins of Jerusalem be happy again. Rejoice because the Lord comforted his people and set Jerusalem free. The Lord showed his holy strength to all the nations. All the faraway countries saw how God saved his people. So leave Babylon. Leave that place. Priests, you carry the things that belong to the Lord. So make yourselves pure. Don't touch anything that is not pure. You will leave Babylon. They will not force you to leave in a hurry. You will not be forced to run away. The Lord will be in front of you. The God of Israel will be behind you. God suffering servant. The Lord says, Look, my servant will succeed in what he has to do, and he will be raised to a position of high honor. But many people were shocked when they saw him. He was beaten so badly that they could hardly recognize him as a man. It is also true that many nations will be amazed at him. Kings will look at him and be unable to speak. They will not hear the story about my servant. They will see it happen. They will not hear the story, but they will understand. Isaiah chapter 53. Who really believed what we heard? Who saw it in the Lord's great power? He was always close to the Lord. He grew up like a young plant, like a root growing in dry ground. There was nothing special or impressive about the way he looked. Nothing we could see that would cause us to like him. People made fun of him, and even his friends left him. He was a man who suffered a lot of pain and sickness. We treated him like someone of no importance, like someone people will not even look at or show respect to. The fact is, it was our troubles he took on himself. He suffered our pain but we thought that God was punishing him, that God was beating him for something he did. But he was being punished for what we did. He was crushed because of our guilt. He took the punishment we deserved, and this brought us peace. We were healed because of his pain. We had all wandered away like sheep. We had gone our own way, and yet the Lord put all our guilt on him. He was terribly abused, but he never protested. He said nothing. Like a lamb being led away to be killed, he was like a sheep that makes no sound as its wool is being cut off. He never opened his mouth to defend himself. He was taken away by force and judged unfairly, and no one even noticed that he was killed. But he was put to death for the sins of his people. He had done no wrong to anyone. He had never even told a lie. But he was buried among the wicked. His tomb was with the rich. The Lord was pleased with this humble servant who suffered such pain. Even after giving himself as an offering for sin, he will see his descendants and enjoy a long life. He will succeed in doing what the Lord wanted. After his suffering, he will see the light, and he will be satisfied 
with what he experienced. The Lord says, My servant who does what is right will take the punishment for the sins of many so that they will not be judged guilty. You can be sure that all those I accept will belong to him. They will be the reward for his victory. I will do this because he laid down his life for them and was considered a criminal for taking on the guilt of many. Now he stands before me and defends those who rebelled against me. Isaiah 54 God brings his people home. This is what the Lord says. Women without children, be happy. You never gave birth to a child, but you should sing and shout for joy. Yes, the woman who is alone will have more children than the woman with the husband. Make your tent bigger. Open your doors wide. Don't think small. Make your tent large and strong because you will grow in all directions. Your children will take over many nations and live in the cities that were destroyed. Don't be afraid. You will not be disappointed. People will not say bad things against you. You will not be embarrassed. When you were young, you felt shame, but you will forget that shame now. You will not remember the shame you felt when you lost your husband. Your real husband is the one who made you. His name is the Lord, all-powerful. The Holy One of Israel is your Savior, and He is the God of all the earth. Like a woman whose husband has left her, you were very sad. Like a young wife left all alone, the Lord has called you back to Him. This is what your God says. For a short time I turned away from you, but with all my love, I will welcome you again. I was so angry that for a while I did not want to see you. But now, I want to comfort you with kindness forever. The Lord, your Savior, said this. Remember in Noah's time, I punished the world with the flood. But I made a promise to Noah that I would never again destroy the world with water in the same way. I promise that I will never again be angry with you and say bad things to you. The mountains may disappear and the hills may become dust, but my unfaithful love will never leave you. My agreement of friendship with you will never be broken. The Lord who loves you said this. You poor city, enemies came against you like storms and no one comforted you. But I will rebuild you with beautiful mortar to lay the stones of your walls. I will use blue gems when I lay the foundation. The stones on top of the wall will be made from rubies. I will use shiny jewels for the gates. I will use precious stones to build the walls around you. I, the Lord, will teach your children and they will have real peace. You will be built on goodness. You will be safe from cruelty and fear. So you will have nothing to fear. Nothing will come to hurt you. I will never send anyone to attack you. And if any army tries to attack you, you will defeat them. Look, I made the blacksmith. He blows on the fire to make it hotter. Then he takes the hot iron and makes the kind of tool he wants to make. In the same way, I made the destroyer to destroy things. People will make weapons to fight against you, but their weapons will not defeat you. Some people will say things against you, but anyone who speaks against you will be proved wrong. This is how I will defend my servants. They have this blessing from me, their Lord. The Lord himself said this. The book of Ephesians, an introduction. In the ancient world, not many people wrote letters from prison. Ephesians is one of only five that we have from the time of the early Roman Empire. The other four are also New Testament letters. It was shameful to be a prisoner. 
friends and relatives would often turn away from those in prison. But for Paul and other believers, it was a great honor to be in prison for following Jesus. For most people, prison was a place without hope. But Paul used even his time in prison to tell others about the new life that Jesus offers. His letter to the Ephesians is a beautiful example of how God uses hard times for good. When Paul wrote this letter, groups of non-Jewish believers in Jesus were gathering in many places throughout Asia Minor, which is now Western Turkey. The church in Ephesus was one of these groups, and it may not have been the only church that received this letter. Many early Greek copies of Ephesians do not have the word in Ephesus, and the letter does not deal with the special problems of a single church. So perhaps it was sent to all the churches in the area. Paul writes to welcome and encourage these non-Jewish believers. He lets them know that God's family is for everyone, Jews and non-Jews. Yes, God loves all people, and his plan is to rescue them from the power of sin through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. God's grace or kindness is for all, so his plan involves the whole universe. But Paul also shows what God's plan means for families and individuals. All believers are part of God's family because they belong to Jesus, and in their own families, Jesus is Lord. He replaces the powerful father, husband, and slave owner, and God prepares every believer for life's battles. Believers must use their gifts to serve each other. They must continue to grow strong in faith, and they must follow the example of God's love and the way they live. Unity is an important idea in this letter. Paul says that all believers are united with Jesus. Jesus is their Lord and Christ, God's chosen king. So they must learn how to live together in peace. Paul describes the church as a body with Jesus as the head. It is also a temple where God lives through the Spirit, and it is God's family. Paul also says the church is like a wife who is united with Jesus as the husband. In this letter, Paul writes to believers in and near Ephesus about Christ and the church and God's great plan for the world. Then he'll talk about God's plan and its meaning for the church and the world. Then God's plan for families in the church and preparing for battle and the fight against evil. And finally, his plan to send Tychicus and his prayers for them. Ephesians chapter 1. Greetings from Paul, an apostle for Christ Jesus. I am an apostle because that is what God wanted. To God's holy people in Ephesus, believers who belong to Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings from God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When God joined us to Christ, he blessed us with all the benefits of heaven that come through his spirit. Before he made the world, God chose us who belong to Christ to be his very own people. Because he loves us, he chose us to be people who have the right to enter into his presence and stand before him without any fault. From the beginning, he decided to adopt us as his children through Jesus Christ. This was what God wanted, and it pleased him to do it. And this brings praise to God because of his wonderful grace. God gave that grace to us freely. He gave us that grace in Christ, the one he loves. Christ gave his life for us. He bled and died to make us free. Yes, our sins are forgiven because of God's rich grace. God gave us that grace fully and freely, with full wisdom and understanding. He let us know his secret plan. This was what God wanted, and he planned to do it through Christ. God's goal was to finish his plan when the right time came. He planned that all things in heaven and on earth be joined together with Christ as the head. In Christ, we were chosen to be God's people. God had already planned for us to be his people because that is what he wanted. And he is the one who was always working to make everything agree with what he decides and wants. We Jews were the first to put our hope in Christ, and we were chosen so that we would bring praise to God 
in all his glory. It is the same with you. You heard the true message, the good news about the way God saves you. When you heard the good news, you believed in Christ. And to show that you belong to him, God put his special mark on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he promised. The spirit he gives us is the first payment to guarantee that God will also give us all the rich blessings he promises to his children. We will all enjoy the complete freedom that is for those who belong to him, and this will bring praise to God in all his glory. Paul's Prayer That is why I always remember you in my prayers, and thank God for you. I have done this ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. I always pray to the great and glorious Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that he will give you the Spirit who will let you know truths about God and help you understand them so that you will know him better. I pray that God will open your minds to see his truth and you will know the hope that he has chosen us to have. You will know that the blessings God has promised his holy people are rich and glorious, and you will know that God's power is very great for us who believe. It is the same as the mighty power he used to raise Christ from death and put him at his right side in heaven. He put Christ over all rulers, authorities, powers, and kings. He gave him authority over everything that has power in this world or in the next world. God put everything under Christ's power and made him head over everything for the church. The church is Christ's body. It is filled with him. He makes everything complete in every way. Psalm 109, verses 21 to 31. My Lord God, treat me in a way that brings honor to your name. Save me because of your faithful love. I am only a poor, helpless man. I am so sad. My heart is broken. I feel like my life is over, fading like a shadow at day's end. I feel like a bug that someone brushed away. My knees are weak from fasting, and I have lost weight and become thin. My enemies insult me. They look at me and shake their heads. Lord, my God, help me. Show your faithful love and save me. Then my enemies will know that you did it. They will know that it was your power, Lord, that helped me. They may curse me, but you will bless me. When they attack me, make them fail. Then I, your servant, will be happy. Cover my accusers with disgrace. Let them wear their shame like a coat. I will keep on thanking the Lord. I praise him in front of everyone. He stands by the helpless and saves them from those who try to put them to death. Thank you, everyone. That was day 265. Join us for day 266. Isaiah continues to prophesy about the end of captivity for the Israelites. But while they still can, while there's still opportunity, they must seek and find the Lord. And Isaiah continues to explain that a righteous man will die with peace in his heart. And continuing in the book of Ephesians, Paul will continue to explain that salvation can only come through faith. But is the reconciliation with God only available to Jews, or is it also available to non-Jews? We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.